Hello and welcome. I'm James Baggett, founder of Car Dealer Magazine, and today I'm chatting to Volvo UK MD Christian Elverforce and Wayland's automotive CEO John O'Hanlon, who runs four Volvo dealers in Reading, Newbury, Oxford, and Swindon. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining me. So um, we are delighted to be joined by um, Volvo's MD. Uh, today they've announced a new upgraded buy online service uh, and they're offering deliveries to people's homes. This has clearly come off the back of the news that the government is now happy uh, for dealers to sell online and deliver uh, during the lockdown. Christian, um, thank you for joining us. Um, can you firstly just tell me a little bit about how Volvo dealt with the shutdown in the first place? I think we actually shut down a week earlier because we had a um, one one of our colleagues who got a quite quite a severe flu. It was never confirmed it was COVID, so we took the precautions to shut the office one week earlier. Actually, so. Uh, we have been uh, seven weeks working from home, and it was also a good way to test the office. Um, and we could work from home, so um, we have been um, uh, video conferencing uh, for seven weeks now. But it works well, so um, here we are. And also, I think the communication between us and the retailers have been very intense throughout the lockdown. I think we have communicated more than ever with them on Webex and seminars and uh, WhatsApp groups, etc. So. Um, I think in some senses it has been an even higher intensity in the communication between us and retailers. So um, remind me how long you've been in the position in the UK now, because I know you swapped roles with, 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 um, with John who's gone to Sweden, is that correct? Yeah, I've been in the position for uh, almost a year, 1st of June last year, so uh, it's 11 months today actually. So. Um, it's I'm, been uh, quite, quite, quite soon active with fire yeah. I suppose over the last few weeks. Yeah, it has. So uh, it has been a really, really good year. I think also with the record from last year and uh, and also 85% uh, of the retailers now in our new VRE shape uh, and a lot of positives throughout the retailerships as well. So um, no, it has been a really interesting year. And then of course, the last weeks have been unspokeable. So uh, what will happen next will be super interesting. So, uh, Christian, tell me a little bit about this uh, this new solution. I, mean, I, I know that you had online sales beforehand. Can you just explain a little bit about, about how this works? And, and, and was it off the back of that news coming out from the government that they were happy for you to do this? I think for us, uh, we, uh, we launched some uh, the first version of the online sales in the UK a year ago. Uh, and we, to be fair, we didn't pay too much attention to it. Uh, the last weeks when we had a lockdown, we said we need to focus on it again and we also need to do it in a, in a safe way and we need to do it in a Volvo way. So we started to prepare quite directly after the lockdown uh, to upgrade it with Molly 21 uh, that is now in the system and also to find a fair solution between us, Volvo Car Financial Service that is run by Santander and also the retailers. Uh, so yesterday we launched and um, I think also we have had the possibility to take all precautions in when it's come to a safe delivery as, as well, we, as it is super important for us. And then we have done that in a close cooperation with the retailers. Um, so that should be guided accordingly with videos, etc. So we should do this in a safe way. For those who want, because it's still on a voluntary basis, there is still customers out there who don't want to cost delivery and they want to wait. And we need to respect that as well. Um, Christian, I'm going, to, I'm going to ask you the question on, on that safety point. Um, it's clearly difficult to know for sure whether delivering to people's homes is safe. Are you confident that you can do it in, in a safe manner at the moment during lockdown? We do think so, yes. And that is the precautions we have taken with sanitising, with covers of seat or the steering knob of the of the steering wheel that we are, when we are returning the car to the retailer, it is actually labelled and locked down for, uh, for 72 hours. And um, then we take the same, well, then we take it in for a refurbishment, the retrade. So we, we do think we have done what is needed and, uh, and we hope that, that we work. 
Um, um, thank you for that, Christian. I'm just going to turn to John for the moment. John, thank you very much for joining us today. I know I've been chasing you down for, a, uh, for an interview for many weeks, so I'm delighted that you've, uh, you've finally succumbed. Um, what's this going to mean to your, to your four dealerships? Um, I suppose if we, if we look back, we closed um, all four showrooms um, following the announcement from the government, but we did maintain um, a general manager's in place with appropriate help as they required. So we've still been answering the phone uh, for sales and after sales, taking inquiries, logging them and pursuing them on a remote basis. What this uh, means uh, is we can now deliver to the customers that want the cars delivered to them. Um, and, you know, we do have cars to go. We had 120 what I would call good inquiries um, throughout April and we sold 49 cars. So there is a level of demand. Um, now, the level of conversion on those was over 40%. And if you're looking at where we normally work to, it's been 20 and 25%. So I think there are more people who wanted the cars, um, uh, you know, needed the cars rather than a desire for the cars. So um, I think, you know, if we can, I mean, do it in a safe, uh, hygienic, social distance way, then we should be delivering to, to customers that can take it. And with this, this gives us another tool that we can use um, and allowing that to happen for our customers. Talk to me, John, a little bit about how it actually works. I mean, is, is the lead generated from the Volvo Cars website and then fed through to you? We can monitor um, throughout. Once the customer selected a retailer, we've got full access to the back of the system. Um, so at any point, if the customer wants to talk to us, it's not cold. We can see exactly where they've been, exactly what they've looked at. So um, in fairness, I was involved with a few other retailers 18, uh, 18 months ago and went through that quite, uh, quite a lot to make the, um, the system as best it could be at the time and as stress-free for the customer, as slick as we could for the customer. And that, I think, has been, been there now for 12 months. And this is, a, this is a gentle enhancement to what is a good system. Um, but it means that when the customer's ready and wants to interact with us, we can do so in an informed way. Um, you know, the perfect scenario would be the customer um, has decided to buy, is happy with the price, we arrange the funding, and then it's almost we deliver um, to, to the customer. So you do do that delivery? You are the ones facilitating the contact list yeah, delivery? Basically, um, Volvo um, give us the system, give us the lead, but it's our responsibility to deliver cars. And I think that's one of the, the strengths. Um, it's not there as a, as a brand directly selling to, to the customer. You know, Volvo's always been, um, I guess, really, really sure about the fact that it was still a retailer sale and it's still the retailer's responsibility all the way through. So who covers the cost of that delivery? That's, that'd be the, the, the dealer, the retailer. So you're having to pick up that cost on top of the on top of the normal sale. Yeah. Are you part? Are you managing to pass that on to the customer, or is it something? No, 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 no. I I think that's not what I'm worried about at the moment. Um, if I can deliver a car and do it in the right way, I'm I'm grateful to the customer for taking it. So I think it works both ways. Um, so now it's it's a cost to me and as a normal cost. That we would that we would take. Um, thank you, John. Chris, Christian, this has probably been quite a tough conversation with your network. I imagine there's a lot of dealers out there at the moment who are not going back to work. A um, number of people have told us that they simply will not deliver to customers' homes. Are all your dealers on board? No, we have uh, we have done this on a voluntary basis, and uh, I think the, the cooperation with the retailers throughout the weeks have been phenomenal. I think we have uh, created a reboot and restart strategy uh, together and we have all aligned on it and we're all ready to go when it's suitable for the different retailers. It's also big groups with different brands, with a lot of brands that want to do everything in the same go and I think we have some ones that have been doing key workers and essential workers throughout the lockdown as well. So, Everyone is in different stages and we need to do this in a slow ramp up to, to bulletproof our guidance and also our James, processes. James, I think that's quite an important part of it. Um, you know, Volvo um, 
have given us the ability and given us some of the tools. If you look around about the PPE packs, they're actually supplying to us. Um, but in no way are we being sort of uh, forced or cajoled. You know, it's, it's, it's there if you want to. It's on a voluntary basis. And I think the way the manufacturers worked with us, you know, it's been open. Um, and Christian's been really, really um, clear about it. It's purely voluntary all the way through. Yeah, I mean, that is an important point, and we've covered this week that there are some manufacturers who have applied yeah. pressure to their dealer networks, wanting them to reopen sooner rather than later, using these sorts of systems, and I mean, a lot of them have pushed back. Um, Christian, can, can I ask then, um, how, many, how many dealers have you got now in the UK, and how many of them are going to be using this service? We have 100 sites, and uh, about half of them are, about 40, 42 that are re owned um, the, on a hundred sites and I would say from from Monday we should be 50 yeah, percent that are open for deliveries and that are willing to take uh, on and, and are actually promise us also that they're doing it in a safe way and following our guidelines and recommendations and then though you will see that you have further retailers uh, starting up throughout the week I would say and then from next week there is a further startup and then when the last ones are starting let's see what are your thoughts, Christian, on, on when retailers are going to be able to get back to business in, in a more traditional fashion? I mean, where, where, where are you guessing that might happen? When are you guessing that might happen? Oh, I think it's up to the government to send that direction to us. I mean, it's hard for us to do. I think what we can do is to be prepared and to, to start to do what we are allowed to do. And uh, then we also I think what is good with the de re delivery process right now is that we can also test that we have a bulletproof safe system that we're doing in a slow, slow pace as a, as a stop. How's your new car supply, Christian, at the moment? Have you got a lot of, of supply in the UK? Uh, we have a fairly good, uh, good level of supply in the UK, but we have been running low on stock for months, uh, but it's fairly okay. I think the factories is up running again which is also strength so all the factories except charleston that do their 60 is up running um so um, okay um and sweden have dealt with this in a very different manner haven't they they're, they're very uh, been very light when it comes to, a, to to the lockdown um what are you what are your colleagues back at home saying about how the uk is treating treating this scenario i no, but i think uh, to be fair i think we have a it is different in Sweden, but also if you take, there was a, an article in a Swedish newspaper the other day stating um, the difference between Denmark and Sweden. Uh, and I think that is also where Denmark had a very hard lockdown and we had a very, what everyone calls an easy lockdown. And so what's a picture of a, fin, of, a, of a lake, a frozen lake, and the Swedish sign says thin ice, where of the, the Dan Danish said forbidden to, work on, to walk on the thin ice. And I think that this is really the mentality of the Swedes. So I think we are doing the, the social distancing. We are not having any, any parties. When I talk to my friends at home, they don't do dinners and so on. But it's, it's really on, on you as a person to take your own responsibility. And I think that's, that's the difference. And I think we are, we are trying to do whatever we can. So if you take the office in Gothenburg, for instance, the majority is still working from home. So... Yeah. I do wonder whether this is a sign of things to come in the UK, whether they're going to start letting us, uh, letting us have these freedoms again, but hoping that we stick to the, uh, the responsibilities that, that the government has outlined. Um, John, can I just turn to you um, quickly on, on the uh, restart of your business? When, when do you think that might happen? Um, well, we're gently restarting. Um, although the showrooms were closed, um, we retained a Newbury workshop open for key and essential uh, workers uh, and to deal with breakdowns um, on the way. So in terms of that workshop has always uh, been open. We will open um, our Oxford workshop um, as of Monday. So what we're, what I've been spent a lot of my time um, over the last um, sort of five, 10 days is just looking at our processes, looking at the equipment that we need looking at how we set up and stage the showroom and what's it look like. Because, you know, I'd echo some of Christian's comments, it does feel that this, there will be a new normal uh, going forward. And that's not weeks, that feels like it's months. So it's actually about getting this done in a absolutely controlled, um, scrupulous fashion, so that customers 
um, know what to expect and when they arrive it is what they expect and that's you know absolutely fantastic hygiene fantastic um, you know safety and fantastic social distancing throughout their experience because as things do get relaxed I think people will actually be looking for not only safety and hygiene to be done but actually to be seen to be done and the people who haven't taken that seriously will come a cropper. What are your uh, thoughts on the end of the furlough scheme, John? I, I assume that you have got staff on furlough at the moment. Um, yeah. we're, we're hearing from a lot of experts at the moment that they'd like a tapered end to that scheme. How, how would that look like in, in your mind? Well, I think, I think the, the reality that we're beginning to understand is lockdown won't be lifted and we won't go back to what we saw as previously normal. Um, and that will require a phasing um, of our resource to meet demand. Um, right now, furlough only runs through to the end of June. And I guess the part that we need to understand more about is how does demand respond? You know, we, it's great that we are restarting, but I think there's a backdrop of, you know, this has cost people money, our, our customers money. This is, um, yeah, there will be, there, there might be layoffs, redundancies, you know, throughout the employment market. So I think it's understanding there is a level of pent up demand, but what is the longer term picture for the year? And then trying to balance a resource with that demand. And if that's the case, that might mean that some people might not come back to work. If we can do a partial furlough to help us through that initial stage, um, that would be incredibly helpful. So when it comes to a partial furlough, are you talking um, the, the amount of staff that you can have on the furlough scheme at 80% or are you talking about the amount the government funds? I would, I would, the amount the government fund, that would just be a simple and easy way. You know, I think there's been some criticisms of some of the furlough and some of the government support, but it's been straightforward and our furlough money arrived within sort of three days. So I think it's been an absolutely, um, you know, it's been fantastic um, in terms of what it's done. And it's allowed me to take longer term decisions for my business. Um, but if the government allowed us to move to a, a percentage, maybe not at 80, so that there's a relief for the taxpayer, but still allows us to maintain a level of, you know, we spent a lot of money training these, these folks. It feels like family for the guys round and about us. So it would be great if we could still retain and continue to pay them at a level um, that allows them just to be a little bit more patient. Thank you for that, John. I, I appreciate your thoughts on that. Um, Christian, just finally, when, when are you planning for the market to, to get back to normal? Oh, that would take months, I would say. Uh, I think we, we, we are planning to do the restart together with the retailers in a very controlled and good way and uh, to secure that we have safe processes in place and that the uh, cars that have been sold that were not delivered in March that are now start to deliver to the customer. And then hopefully we will set, see some new cars coming into the country as well. And um, yeah, then we'll see what, what the appetite will be in the market and also see if we, how, how big the consumer confidence is. Yes, when we when we see some 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 sort of mid June, I would say, but hopefully we can start in May uh, and uh, we can start to see some sales improvement. And with reference to China and the, to Germany, for instance, as we we are a global company and how we work, I think what we see in China now is quite back on track. And also, I think from a German perspective, second week after the uh, they lifted some of the recommendations. Uh, some of the rules and also uh, having the allowance of showrooms to be open, you can see that these, uh, there is a recap, but of course a slow one, but there is a one, and we need to take care of those customers that are willing to buy the cars out there. Okay, thank you, uh, Christian. Thank you very much for your time today. John, thank you also for joining us and uh, sharing your thoughts. I wish you the best of luck with the, uh, with the scheme and I hope it allows Volvo and its retailers to, uh, to get back to work. If you want to watch uh, car dealer lives like this one, get onto our website, cardinalmagazine.co.uk, scroll down to the homepage, uh, there's lots of interviews like this. But just please me to say thank you very much to the gentleman, and we'll see you next time. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye.